let's see how this works out. Hello everyone and finish a crossbow. It's on its way to Indiana, which is nice. Um, always appreciate the happy customers. And I'm sure um, he's going to be thrilled when he sees it. It's a beautiful thing. Oh my gosh. Now that I'm feeling better, my health is returning, endurance is up there, and I'm seeing these clear, beautiful skies that we're having. My thoughts are turning to the, the night sky again. And I have, this is not my only telescope. This is certainly not the big one. But I've probably had more fun with this thing since I received it as a Christmas present in the early 80s than I've had um, with my, the large Orion telescope, big light bucket. I, this is an old Tosco, believe it or not, a 114 millimeter reflector, Newtonian, but I hopped it up. It came with the, the, the small eyepieces, which were junk. It came with a junk finder scope, but the mirror <clears throat> is really well done. So when I hopped it up by putting a 1.25 inch um, focusing mechanism, I could get these great great uh, wide field multi-element all coated eyepieces and the telescope basically is eyepiece is a, a beautiful celestron I think it's a six element Barlow lens which doubles the magnification this is a two times and it's wonderful got rid of the old finder scope and put a red dot it's almost like cheating it's almost like cheating um, hey Rob Mon Screech this is the same telescope that we spent hour upon hour drinking bad coffee um, and trying to find Messier objects. Beautiful telescope. I was just out, I've got a solar filter, so I was checking out the sun. Um, never look through a telescope without proper filters, of course. I even take my finders off when I'm aimed at it. Sun's kind of boring today. Didn't see a lot of sunspot activity, but it's always kind of fun to see the, the heat flowing around it. And it got me to thinking, yes, you know, I fall into the trap of the, the flat earth movement. But let me explain why. It's a puzzle. Just like uh, building bows, you know, it's problem solving. Um, building that crossbow or the skein lock bow, problem solving. I like, I like thinking about things. I like debating. I like solving riddles and, and, and issues, you know, problems. And not problems like, oh, I've got carbuncles on my feet. But problems like... Um, what's the square root of pi, you know, something like that. And so when I'm looking at this, there's all these things, proof. Um, the earth is flat, the sun proves it. And, and so I've gone through all these videos, sometimes just for entertainment, just to think. And there is one thing, there's one aspect of this flat earth proof that I've never seen um, questioned or debated. The one thing is, um, with the present, the present system, the, the standard model of the solar system in the universe, the Earth goes around the sun and it rotates as it does. That's why we have days. I'm not going to get into like the tilt, the seasonality. And basically what it is with the, the spherical Earth model, the standard model of the solar system, the Copernican system, you know, um, as the Earth rotates throughout the day, spins... The sun is at a, a constant distance from it. And so I've shown, I've made a huge pinhole camera with an extreme um, focus, focus length. I don't know if you can say focal length with a pinhole camera. Um, but what I did was, actually with a small grid, measured the diameter, the parent diameter of the sun throughout the day. And it didn't change. And so that would, that would in a straightforward manner, indicate that the sun is not changing distance from us because the size doesn't change. Okay, um, people in the flat earth movement are saying that atmospheric lensing is causing a change in size, apparent size of the sun, just apparent size, and so it remains a constant um, visual diameter throughout the day. Okay, I don't buy it, but that's fine, that's a reason. But there's something about that that has never been questioned as far as I saw in a YouTube video, and that's luminosity, Lum how bright something appears. And if I came out here in the morning and measured the luminosity of the sun, how bright it is, how uh, apparent brightness, how bright it is, because of the distance, it's apparent brightness. <laughs> measured it at noon, same brightness, you know, on a clear day. Measured it in the evening, 
you know, more or less the same brightness. That can't be explained. F, this is me on the Earth. That I am the observer. And the sun, according to the flat Earth, is hovering about 3,000 miles or whatever up. And, you know, if I'm at, on the tropic, one of the tropics, you know, the sun is going over me, and then it's changing distance. The luminosity would change, the, uh, the brightness of it. And it's not strictly, you move it twice as far away, it's twice as dim. It's an inverse square. So if I have the sun here, I'm the observer, the sun's here, um, and I double the distance, it's not twice as dim, it's four times as dim. If I double the distance again, roughly speaking, you know, there's some geometry involved, it would be 16 times as dim. Now you can imagine that this observer, as they're seeing the sun change, distance from them, as it's just kind of floating in a circle over the, the flat earth, uh, four times difference in brightness, luminosity, and then a 16 times dimmer uh, amount of luminosity. That would be very apparent. It would be like, it's bright, and it dims, 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 um, continuously. And so, you might say that there is some action that the sun, because of atmosphere or whatever, changes luminosity. That's really pushing it. But consider that this is not the only observer. There's other observers around here, and it's not that the sun is like getting brighter and then dimmer and brighter and dimmer to, to fix a, a constant luminosity for this person. It doesn't work because it can't do that throughout the Earth for all these different observers. And so simply put, in conclusion, um, you know, it's impossible that the, the sun is actually just floating through here with a constant luminosity for all these observers because of the inverse um, squared thing. The, further it gets, the dimmer it gets, and it's not an even thing where it's like twice as far, twice as dim. Um, it's it's a, a squared fraction. Double the distance, um, roughly, four times as dim. Double that again, 16 times. Double that again, 32 times dimmer. And with the geometry, if the sun is 3,000 miles up, and you know that from ice wall to ice wall, it, it's pretty darn big, that would be a tremendous difference in distance between all these observers and the sun. And so there it is. I'm going to clean it up, think about it, and I'm curious if anybody has a response as far as how come the sun doesn't appear to change luminosity to that extreme degree. Um, please let me know. And there's no reason for people to get angry and call each other stupid or crazy or stuff. People have different beliefs and it doesn't necessarily, you know, have to result in an angry discourse. I'm just kind of curious, how do you answer that question of a constant luminosity throughout the day uh, if the sun is actually changing um, distance from the observer to a, a, a great degree, a, a, a degree enough of large enough mag magnitude to actually register um, huge difference in the luminosity. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. In the next video you'll see, I don't know, it might be a uh, an English warbow, it might be another crossbow, it might be my project. I want to make a crossbow that can shoot over 300 yards, you know, a decent weighted um, projectile. Have a good one. I'm going to get back to yard work. This is great. This is so great to be able to see the ground again and be able to rake leaves and clean stuff up. I'm geeked. I'm geeked for the summer.